Leanne, what's going on? Hi. Uh, like, uh, I'm doing good. Doing good. <laughs> I don't get you that. Might've... I don't get that. Like, hey, doing good. <laughs> that makes my makes my heart feel you good. You know, I have I have some hard stuff to tell you, but I am blessed, and so life life is pretty good despite. Oh, are you a minimizer? No, I like to think that I, I well. Okay, you tell me. Am Let, I a minimizer? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. All right, all right. I feel like you're going to drop some heavy, heavy, heavy on here. <laughs> well, it, it is pretty heavy stuff. Um, five years ago, five and a half years ago, my husband, who was 39 years old, I was 34, uh, took his life. Oh, and, Leanne, I'm sorry. Yeah, hard, hard things. I had seven children, ages 13 and under, and a four month old on my hip at the funeral. And wow. um, all, all of, were, was he the father of all seven? Yes. Yes. Wow. And we had been married 15 years. Whoa. Um, so the oldest at the time was 13 and he just really struggled with his dad's death. Um, it was very hard for him to overcome. We did counseling, we did medication, we did treatment programs. I did everything to try to help him. And Two years ago, um, last month, he took his life, and I oh, found him man. hanging in my shed, and it was terrible and it was awful. But um, I'm now we're two years out, and obviously, still very hard. But the problem I'm running into. Hey, hold on, real quick, no matter, real quick before you get yes. to the problem. Stop there, okay? Because you blew by that pretty quick. That's a lot. It's, it is a lot, yes. It's a lot. And you've got six other kids that you immediately rallied around to take care of? That yes. is a lot. Mm -hmm. And here's the deal. Leanne, I've shown up. I've been in that exact scene holding a mother in that exact moment. Right. That's a lot. It's pretty horrific. Yeah. No mother should ever see that ever i agree no I agree. no wife should ever experience that and i know there's right. some sort of challenge that has presented itself today but i don't want to get to that until you hear me say i'm so sorry Thank you. I appreciate that. Man. Whew, okay, so fast forward three years. So your son was 16 when he passed he was away? 16 years old. Two okay. years. So it was two years ago. Yes, he was 16. He'd be 18 now. Okay. Um, how was, how was the graduation? Was that a hard moment for you? It was. When his friends started nice graduating? It's you to understand that it would be because a lot of people don't get that. Oh yeah, yeah. But when his friends were graduating, yeah, it's a night. Was, it's a nightmare. Hard. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and I want you. You're not asking for this, I don't think. But as you move through, um, be super intentional to to put stars on the calendar and intentionally grieve those seasons. Okay. Right. Yeah. When when they start graduating, his friends graduate college. When you see their Facebook stuff. When you see when the first one of his old buddies has a kid. When all those moments, mm -hmm. don't fight that. Just let that wash over you because it's going to hurt, right? Right. And that's, right. that's part of the healing and grieving process. So he dies by suicide three years ago. And then fast forward, you, you're, now you're a single mom with six kids. Yeah, doing the single mom thing for five years. But now yeah. oldest son's been gone two years. So now I have these six kids and, um, you know, I work, I'm a mom, um, and I... The struggle I'm running into is these sweet kids. It makes me emotional when I talk about it. But um, the hardest part is honestly just watching my kids have to age overnight and carry burdens that would cripple grown grown adults. And um, just watching them try to have to weather that and navigate that. And everyone's in counseling. We have we go. We go the whole nine yards. Um, my struggle, though, and some do better than others of my children, but um, it's the older ones in particular that kind of remember their brother the most, really struggle with taking dad and brother's death 
personally that Mm -hmm. it means that I wasn't lovable enough to keep them here Mm. and that maybe I'm not worthy and um you being you being mom or you being like they're they're feeling that individually that's their voice okay okay. their voice feels like because I they voice they have voiced this to me we're very open and speak openly about all this stuff great and um that has been a worry on a lot of their hearts is if what does this mean that dad really didn't love me if he's willing to just leave and does this mean brother never even cared about me if he would leave us in this situation knowing how much it hurt having losing a family member to this because brother knew brother went through it too yeah so that's the struggle is i told them over and over and like i said they're in so much counseling but it, they're being told this has nothing to do with you but mm-hmm. kids will i feel like just make it about them make it about if they were good kids or if they're not good kids and they, I, I am having the hardest time correcting that belief system that is being created in some of them, yeah. that this was bigger than any of us. It was inside of them, mm-hmm. and it had nothing to do with you, and still yet, especially my 16-year-old daughter, just really feels like I could have prevented this if I was a better girl. Mm-hmm. I hate that for you. I know I keep saying that. I'm sorry that you're having to navigate that. Right. Um, so you've, if you've listened to this show before, I've talked about this with marriages. This is one of those cases where it is, it's, it's clear how it happens. But kids feel tension. They absorb trauma and they make it their fault. That's the only way they know how to regulate themselves is with other people. And when other people die by suicide, they're left looking in the mirror with nobody. And so right. they look at that gap between them and somebody that they loved who's no longer here. And they say that, what did I do? Right. And what a good therapist will do is help them understand that that illness was in somebody else's mind. Right. A good therapist will say, it feels like this, but here's the truth of those feelings. And there is a part of being 16, 17, and 18, we got to weather that. And mm-hmm. it's just an uncomfortable, mm-hmm. hard season. Where you're going to really struggle and you're going to have to struggle to not project this is you're reliving this again. Because now you've got another 16-year-old. Absolutely. And your your brain is gearing up for number two. Mm-hmm. Right? It's true. It's been down this road before. And so yes. the challenge you're going to have is not project. What happened to your son, statistically speaking, will not happen again. Right. I sure hope not. There you go. Right. It won't happen again. But you and I both know that it might. Yeah. Right. Ninety nine point nine nine percent chance that it won't happen again. But you have lived the point zero zero one and your brain knows that your heart knows that. So it's on full alert. And as I just said, kids feel that tension. And they're going to make it their fault. Yes. And yep, so we've already experienced that. I work on that in therapy for myself, that inside mm-hmm. I'm like completely overreacting and freaking out. And outside I have to be, I'm so sorry you feel that way. Let's talk about that. Like, you know, uh, it, it, hey, hold it's on, hold on, challenge. hold on. Listen, challenge. I don't want to get in the middle of your therapy, right? You're, I'm, I'm assuming you've got a great counselor. Right. But if you were my client... I'm not even licensed, so I'm not going to put it that way. Here's what I'd recommend to you just as a, as a neighbor, okay? Okay. When you feel a mess inside, your daughter needs to feel that congruence. She feels that you're a mess inside, and when your face is like, hey, baby, how's it going? She knows there's something not right. Something's not right. congruent there between your heart and your, and your body and between your heart and what you're saying to her. As one of my students who was on the autism spectrum once said to me, I was laughing, but I was also telling him, hey, dude, you can't have alcohol in here. And he said, your words are not matching your face. I need you to clarify Uh for me, right? Right. So very similar situation. So the greatest gift you can give your daughter is to say, I'm so scared because this is when I lost your brother and I love you more than life itself. And I'm scared. And then suddenly you become human and then you become just like her. And suddenly she didn't feel so crazy anymore. Right, right. Does that make sense? We've had yes, and we've had those conversations too. But I, I am still, I am still working through the 
the, my son thing that sometimes I feel like just freaking out in a way that would scare her. And mm-hmm. so very much I have to tone that down that I have had those conversations that what you're saying is scaring me. So like, let's talk about that. Let's keep, let's keep talking about this, but, mm-hmm. but you're right. Like I do, I almost probably go to the other, the, the pendulum kind of swings the other way that I don't want to, I don't want to scare her. I don't want to upset her. And challenging after you have lost a kid because you were holding boundaries and trying to parent them the way that you know they need to be parented, especially when it's a son who doesn't have a dad Mm -hmm. and then they kill themselves. It, it, it is hard to stay at that level of parenting that you know is right for your kids to hold boundaries and expect things of them that kids need to be able to do. Um, Hey, Leanne, 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 Mm -hmm. your son's death was not your fault. My and, brain knows that. My heart still struggles. Leanne, I'm telling you right now, your son's death was not your fault, and you're still carrying it. Yeah. Your son was a lovely, hilarious, funny, gross, hairy-legged 16-year-old boy whose he- head was not well. Right. And he died. Yep. Not your fault. Right. Yes. You, you've it makes got. a scary endeavor. It's so for the scary. It's the most scary. It's your heart walking outside of your body out in the neighborhood, right? Right. But you got to set that brick down. Because when you're carrying that gigantic cinder block of somewhere deep down, I, I, I I'm responsible for this. All that brick is taking up both of your hands and you can't fully grab and hug the life into your other kids with all your might, right? Right. Yeah. And so your good. grief, to, to quote the, the grief, the greatest grief guy on planet Earth, David Kessler, your grief has to be witnessed. Someone's got to sit in it with you. And there is no better people on Earth to sit in it with you than those who experienced it with you. Right. Right. Have you all done those exercises where you all, um, especially you and your your 16-year-old, we all write them a letter together? No, we haven't. I'd recommend that. And maybe ask your therapist to do that. Um, that y'all want to do that together, all three of you. But y'all write them a letter, and or you write one and she write one, and y'all read them out loud in a, in a counseling session. Mm-hmm. And in that letter, you talk about how much you miss him, how mad at him you are, how much you love him. And then yeah. the, beautiful, the beautiful part of this is you're both seen, you're both letting your feelings that are on the inside come be seen on the outside. And then you talk about who you're going to be. Here's the kind of mom I'm going to be. Here's how we're going to make meaning of this mess. And what that begins to do for, for you and your 16-year-old is it begins to plot a course for tomorrow. And when those that we love die by suicide, our tomorrow just goes away, right? You just stumble right. through every single day to get to the next day, to get to the next day. My guess is you've right. already mapped out just like probably to the day, how many days you got left with all six of these kids, right? You, it is just how can you get through today, get through today, get through today, get through today. And it's hard and it's hard and it's hard. And once you turn I this- I don't want that for them. I know. I don't want them with the mom in survival mode. I... Leanne, Leanne, I don't want this for you. You're too extraordinary. You're too extraordinary. And right now you are living a life that you've got duct taped and knitted and nailed together because you're trying to hold it together for them. And you've got to exhale and let that thing go. And that means you're going to have to let your son go. And you're still holding on to him because you still want to edit the story because somehow you think you're the author of what happened and you're not. Okay. And there's nothing on this call. I mean, I, we, like what has happened to you should not happen. And I'm so, so sorry. Thank you. And what I want for you is to feel that. I want your kids to feel that their mom feels. I want their kids to know that my mom's human and that she is a mess just like we are. And that we miss, miss, miss our brother. Miss, miss dad. 
that we super are mad at them and we understand what they did. And we don't understand it, but we understand that they weren't, they weren't well. Right. And then we're going to start charting a, charting a course for tomorrow. We're going to make mean of this stuff. Right. God, and what a gift. Your gift is not going to be making sure they don't get any bumps or bruises. Your gift is going to be letting them see your bumps and bruises. Yeah. Letting them see your scars. That's the gift you give them at this point. And letting them know they're the most precious, special, wonderful messes on planet Earth. Right. Okay. I can do that. I will do that. But that starts with you letting this, putting that brick down. Yeah. And that sounds a lot cooler. Yeah. It's super like, like it's a cool thing to say on the radio and then just like click over to the next call and you hang up and you're like, what, how do I even do that? Start with a letter. (laughs) Okay. Right. Start with a letter. Talk to him about that. You're so sad that you're missing graduation. And it's also awesome to see his buddies graduating and you are pissed that he's not graduating. Mm -hmm. Maybe send his buddies a card. And congratulate them. That's the that's the little breadcrumbs towards making meaning of this. Is when you cheer on his classmates, right? Okay. When you call his old girlfriend and you send her a note to say, "Hey, don't call her," because that can be kind of weird. But um, to send her a little card or something that says, "We miss you and happy graduation." Whatever. I don't know what the what the story was there, but right. Um, right. Begin the slow the slow turn into making meaning of this thing. But I check on that. Start there with a letter. Start there with your daughter writing a letter. You doing it. And I think reading out loud to each other is going to humanize you in front of your daughter. And remember this. She's watching you for her only picture of how a strong, wonderful mother, a strong, wonderful woman deals with hurt. All right. And you want her to be able to feel this, to acknowledge it, to own it, to to stumble and and cry and get dragged down that river of grief. You want her to experience all those things, but you got to show her, you got to model it. Okay. And that's how you end up becoming well too. Thank you so, so much for your call, Leanne. You're a brave, wonderful woman. If you, if you would be willing to, it's, it'd be a brave thing. But after you read your letters to each other, um, again, preferably with your counselor, if y'all read your letters to each other, I'd love for you to give me a call back and let me know how that went. I'd love to know, um, about how that moment was between you and your daughter. I think that's going to be a remarkable, remarkable turn for your family. Thank you so much for the call.